Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a really exciting new unboxing video on the Spyderco Drunken. Uh, it comes in this super nice case. Spyderco usually send their sort of special edition or higher end knives in these plush cases. I know that the Nirvana came in this. And so here it is, the Spyderco Drunken as designed by Dmitry Sinkevich. And so this is a very interesting knife. Wanted to show you what else comes in the packaging. It comes wrapped in this. And then you get your usual Spider Co. information. I absolutely love the information that they provide here. You can go ahead and pause this video and take a read of this. Basically, it tells us about Dmitry Sinkovich, that he's a Belarusian designer, and about the special materials, including S90V steel, carbon fiber, and the integral lock. We'll go ahead and move the packaging off the screen, and we can go ahead and take a look at the Drunken by Spyderco. It gets its name from the milling pattern that you see in the carbon fiber and on the titanium side. This is Dimitri's Drunken pattern of milling. It is an irregular, wandering, wavy type of milling pattern and it is characteristic of some of his custom knives. Dimitri making some very highly sought after custom knives that are very difficult to acquire. He has done plenty of collaborations with other uh, companies, including Zero Tolerance and Shirogorov. This knife may look oddly familiar to a couple of those knives, namely the 0456 from Zero Tolerance bears a striking resemblance in the overall profile, although the two knives could not be more different in their execution. The Drunken keeps Sinkovich's unique blade shapes unique handle ergonomics, and this is a real tour de force for the Spyderco brand. Much like the Nirvana, this knife comes in above the $400 mark. This is $410 shipped new from most sites right now. Um, but it really steps into the next category of knife making. Uh, Spyderco is really well known for keeping things simple. This is a very complex knife. We're going to get into the details and answer the question that everyone has been asking about it. Is it worth $410? So we're going to see what we're looking at here. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and get some vital signs on the Drunken. Up front, you're looking at a three and a half inch blade with three and a half inches of cutting length. The nice thing about that swooping blade, just like on the Sigma from Shirogorov, it sweeps up underneath the handle edge so you get a full three and a half inches of cutting length as well. You're at eight inches of overall length. The handle length is 4.6 inches with an effective grip area somewhere in the four and a quarter inch range right there. The blade stock on this was a nice surprise. It came in at 139 thousandths, which is thinner than a lot of knives, including the paramilitary series. And the handle at its widest point is coming in sub half inch at 0.49 inches right there. There is extensive internal milling and half of the knife is made out of carbon fiber. And so a very impressive statistic on this is the 3.75 ounces of weight. It puts it right next to that one-to-one -one ratio of blade inches to handle ounces that I like to see. And so that makes for an excellent carry. If you can get that uh, close to a one-to-one -one ratio, that's very, very nice. Let's go ahead and bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to compare this to another couple Spyderco knives. Here is the Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3. If I line these things up butt to butt, you'll see it's much more uh, on the category of the Para 2 than it is on the Para 3. It's a bit of a larger knife uh, in hand, but uh, that's quite nice. I do like that a lot. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here for a comparison? Actually, this is a very valid comparison. This is the Spidey Chef. I have a feeling that I'm going to do a dedicated video to comparing the two of these knives uh, because they are so remarkably similar. You would think that they were designed by the same person. This, however, is designed by Marcin Slich and uh, is a totally different knife. But it will be interesting to see how these two stack up to each other. So uh, before we go uh, much more into that topic, we're going to go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. Up front is my absolute favorite part of this knife, the blade. 
Uh, this is done in CPM S90V steel, which is a very, very, very premium steel. Among the absolute best in the entire world. Uh, very, very good edge retention. Excellent corrosion resistance. Uh, maybe a little bit on the harder side for end user maintenance. But what I am most impressed about with this blade is the fact that they were able to mirror stonewash the thing. S90V is notorious for being a pain to try to mirror wash, to try to mirror polish. A lot of makers simply won't do it. Uh, I recall asking uh, Peter Rosenti to make me a knife uh, with an S90V blade that he would mirror polish, and he outright refused. He said it's pretty much impossible to attain a nice mirror wash, but I will say that Spyderco has done an excellent job, if I can put these two side by side. You'll see that the CPM 154 of the Nirvana is a bit clearer. It takes a bit of a better mirror polish, but they've done an incredible job with this S90. That in and of itself uh, earns it some extra dollar values right there, the fact that S90 has been polished like this. It's one of my favorite finishes. I call it the mirror wash, the mirror stone wash, and uh, it's brilliant. And what it does to the Tai Chung blade, again, this uh, I haven't actually mentioned that yet. This knife is made in Tai Chung, in the Tai Chung factory, is that it knocks down the classically sharp corners of the Tai Chung stuff. Tai Chung blades are often, actually, I'll bring this back out here, the Spidey Chef. As you can see, little bits of my finger a nail go flying because... The spidey hole and the blade uh, spine right here are all 90 degree angles. Sharp angles, not necessarily knock, locked down, but the stone wash here has polished it all up and just made it so nice to the hand. Uh, the spidey hole is not sharp in any way, and as you can see, clearly accessible for a spidey flick. I really enjoy the blade shape right here. I'll call it sort of a modified sheep's foot blade shape i really enjoy it i've used this for everyday carry purposes for the last few days the way that you can sneak this tip into things out uh, it's just incredible you have a stabbing ability but also the warncliffe sheep's foot style pushing ability with a robust tip it's a nice 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 blade shape and it's unbelievably sharp if you take a look at the way that it's ground incredibly incredibly thin material behind the edge taken down to an incredibly sharp edge Super nice. The edge bevels are very even, straight from the factory. This is the factory edge on it as of right now. Absolutely incredible sharpness from the factory. Beautiful laser type of an edge on this knife. Decent sharpening choil with a decent sharpening edge, all the uh, sharpening job all the way back to the edge uh, of the blade right there. Reasonable. Uh, taking it back to the pivot here, this is another very compelling thing to me. It runs on phosphor bronze washers. You can see those nice big washers in there. Uh, the action is great. As you can see, the knife flies open. I've had this now for maybe close to a week. It's taken me that long to make this video uh, for doing the unboxing. So this is not truly an unboxing. I did want to show you that it came in that nice case. But this is sort of an unboxing and initial impressions. I really like that it's on washers. This knife is not as smooth as a ball bearing knife. It's not the same as a ZT in the way that it closes, but as you can see, in just a week's time, it's smoothed out to become relatively smooth. And I think that over a month or two months, it's gonna become unbelievably smooth, much like some of the other phosphor bronze washer knives that we've come to know and love from Spyderco. You can see how this pair of three just flaps back and forth. <clears throat> what I really also like about the uh, knife is that it comes with this beautiful titanium hardware. Now, I got this knife secondhand, and it's obvious that the first owner disassembled this knife, but this does bring into uh, light one of the issues that someone might have with this knife, and that is the fact that it is blue anodized titanium. If you like to sort of maintain your knives, there is a risk that you could mark that up. As you can see, very, very minor little scratches inside of where they put that Torx bit. That's why I got this knife uh, for a pretty good price uh, on the secondhand market. Uh, I just wanted to get this in hand and see what it was all about. And uh, honestly, I I've liked it a lot more than I thought I would. But the Phosphor Bronze washers are a lot of fun. They provide a lot of rigidity and they make this knife a tool knife. They take, it really shows Spyderco's dedication to creating excellent cutting tools 
rather than just beautiful flashy Instagram knives. I will say that is what really separates them from knife companies like Zero Tolerance. Zero Tolerance really likes to make flashy knives. Uh, I'm gonna pull out one right now that look really cool, but they're not necessarily the best design tools. Uh, I've got one right here I think is a perfect example. The only ZT that I even have right now is this 0609 Purple. And I bought this knife for a Patreon exclusive video to sort of express my disinterest in the current ZT lineup because they're just not doing anything interesting right now and I feel that, that Spyderco really is. And so it's interesting to bring out a ZT because I feel that this knife may be Spyderco doing ZT better than ZT. Which is funny because we know ZT is a company that does Emerson and Hinderer better than Emerson and Hinderer. Now we're seeing Spyderco do ZT better than ZT. And so this is an interesting, very, very interesting knife. Phosphor bronze washers like the early ZTs. Really rugged construction, nicely made, extreme milling. Really, really nicely done. This is nicer than pretty much anything that ZT has to offer right now. Also more expensive, but that's sort of, uh, that's we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, again, I like the Pivot hardware. Let's go ahead and move back to the handle uh, where we see where the real cost in making this knife came. So the front scale is beautiful carbon fiber, voidless carbon fiber with that drunken milling pattern. Very uniformly done. I cannot see any imperfections anywhere in the milling which means that they had to spend a ridiculous amount of time doing it. The back is 6AL4V titanium, also with no flaws in that milling. Imagine the tooling that they had to do in order to make this so perfect for so many knives. I understand Dimitri can make one knife that's beautiful, and you know he can do a design and put this drunken milling pattern on it, but he only has to have enough tooling to make one knife or a couple of knives. Spyderco have to make hundreds of these things. And so it's, it's incredible to me that they've been able to create this level of beautiful milling and that their tooling is up to the, the task. Really a testament to the Taichung factory that they've done this so well. Not only is the outside beautifully milled, if you take a close look on the inside, there is tremendous internal milling with scaffolding, really beautifully done. Also, the carbon fiber side is internally milled. As a matter of fact, they've installed a steel liner on the carbon fiber side. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. It is a full length steel liner inside there. It goes from around the pivot all the way to the tail of the blade. It's completely hidden underneath here. Uh, while I appreciate that from maybe a rigidity standpoint, carbon fiber is pretty damn strong in and of itself. Uh, and I think that the steel just added weight. I'm not entirely sure why they did that. I'm sure it was an engineering thing uh, with regards to maybe tolerances for a phosphor bronze washer knife. I really don't know. I couldn't tell you why they did it that way. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it as a full carbon fiber. It would have made it a little bit lighter. But I'm sure Spyderco has their reasons, including that the stop pin is stuck into the steel here rather than just carbon fiber. Perhaps it's a longevity thing. What I'm also seeing is that there are screws <clears throat> that seem to come through the titanium side and then thread through the steel liner on this side. And so that's nice to see. I will disassemble this knife eventually uh, and take a look at the insides. I haven't needed to do that yet, but it looks to be very well made. Here you can see there is a 75% length titanium car, uh, backspacer that is anodized blue to match the hardware and the clip. Now, let's talk about the most controversial part of this knife and probably the worst part of this knife, and that's the pocket clip. Spyderco is the company that invented the pocket clip, and somehow on this knife they made it terrible. As it came from the factory, it was way, way too tight, and the main problem is that they put it right over the lock bar cutout. And so particularly right here, where there is very little clearance. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Very little clearance between that lock bar cutout and the clip. Things get caught on that little ridge right there as you're trying to put this into your pants. Uh, as it came from the factory, that gap was actually even smaller 
it was, you know, maybe if I push on it, something like that. What I've done is I take the clip and I've bent it. Just, just take it, take it and bend it. Just bend this out of it. And uh, <laughs> it relaxes it quite a bit and it allows for this to come up as you put it into the pant and it uh, increases that clearance. So just pull on it. Honestly, if you just pull on it, it relaxes the clip enough to where it becomes your standard Spyderco clip. Uh, and then that problem goes away. I think that people have been a bit disappointed that this doesn't go into pants very well. But if you're just aggressive about bending it out, it actually turns into a very functional pocket clip. I wish that it had been better executed from the beginning, but it is what it is. Uh, and so in hand, this thing is very comfortable. It fits my uh, extra large size 8 sterile glove hand very, very well. Uh, get a full four finger grip on it. Your thumb rests nicely on this jimping right here. The jimping, it does not provide a tremendous amount of traction, but it's not totally useless either. Very nice spot for your thumb to rest. The over the hand grip is very comfortable as well. The ergonomics are excellent. In true Spyderco fashion, they've taken the design and they've made it also very ergonomic. I would say that it's as good or better than the ZT equivalents of this. Something else that's very impressive to me is that they've done a steel lock bar insert. They've learned from their failures with the Nirvana that titanium on steel is not going to work. We're also going to see this in the upcoming Paisan, the new Peter Rosenti collaboration, which I actually have incoming from Peter Rosenti himself. Thank you to my Patreon patrons for that one right there. Another thing that I really like is the fact that there is the lock bar is raised as compared to the presentation side, and there is a small amount of very unique sort of traction jimping right there that is not sharp in any way but does provide some positive traction. So all in all, this knife is really, really well done. I'm thinking I'm going to love this knife. At $410, it's honestly a pretty good price. This knife, I think you need to not think of this necessarily as a Spyderco. You need to think of this almost as a Shirogorov. We are approaching those levels of fit and finish and construction perfection. Yes, the hardware is a bit simple, but also a Shirogorov costs two times as much as this knife as its base price. If you think of this knife more as Spyderco trying to make a Shirogorov, rather than even trying to make a ZT, this is better than a ZT, then you'll begin to understand maybe where that cost is. S90V mirror polished, carbon fiber with the Dmitry Sinkovich patterning, this titanium extensively milled on both sides, the engineering to make this happen and then executed and then delivered to your door with this type of fit and finish, this is something that Dimitri can be proud of. This is a very, very nice knife, and I have a feeling that it's going to be one of the best knives Spyderco has ever made, ever. And really and truly, I'm looking forward to pocketing this for a long time, coming back to you with a final diagnosis and seeing what this knife is all about. I did not think I was going to like this knife, and it is probably the best Spyderco ever maybe oh, the Capara was really great but this may be the best one that they've ever done from top to bottom in terms of just quality and perfection it's incredible guys it really is good this is more impressive than the Nirvana was the Nirvana was an integral but this knife has more detail this knife is actually more impressive and less of a disappointment so I see the $410 worth of value here you may not understand that. You may think Spyderco shouldn't be making a knife that expensive. But again, don't think of this as a Spyderco. Think of this as almost a budget Shirogorov with all the excellence that you would expect from one of those knives, but made by Spyderco. Very cool. Very nice knife. Uh, really, really like it. Looking forward to carrying this. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frunky. Help support me and my channel by heading over to patreon.com slash Dr. Frunky, where you can become one of my patrons. Uh, the Paisan, which I uh, just purchased with funds, is actually going to be given back to one of my patrons uh, as part of the whole deal over there. So head over there and check that out. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.